Now we are going to begin talking about structure of language. It is part of I language and uh, this will help us understand underlying patterns. So, first we are going to see as part of a structure of language sound system. Okay? So, last time or a couple of days ago I asked you, uh, what is the difference between consonant and a vowel? Did I? Did you get a chance to take a look at that? Okay, let me, let me go back. Have you learnt a language in the classroom? Yes. Which language did you learn in classroom? English. English. When did you start learning English? When? LKG, right? Then why did you have to learn it later also? Did, were you taught English in schools and high schools also? Yes. Why? If you have, if you already did that in LKG, then why did you learn it again in high school? Go ahead. We did not learn the complete language. You know we did learn it, but then we added more words to our vocabulary. More words to vocabulary later. In the process. In the process. Okay. So at any point in time, there are lots of questions that any that one can ask, but right now I'll focus on the questions that are related to sounds. So at any point in your learning of English. Were you taught about sounds, that is particularly consonants and vowels? Yes or no? Yes. All right, letters, fine. But did they say something about, did your teacher say something about consonants and vowels? Yes, no. So, at least you can say I were, we were told, right? But we do not remember. Does anyone remember consonants and vowels? No. Okay. So, can you tell me the things that you remember about those that class? Just just couple of them. Not not everything you have to list for me. Just a, a e i o u are the vowels and the rest are consonants. A e i o u are vowels and rest of them are consonants. Are you happy with that? Why part is also there? Why part why is? A, E, I, O, U, R, D. Why are they? Why are they? Sure, that's an important question. Why are A, E, I, O, U vowels, and rest of them consonants? Any any idea? Okay. Ka ba starts from tip of the tongue. Say ka. Do you no. see any role of tip of the tongue in that? No. Ba. Any role of tip of tongue in that? No. A G I O U uh, represents the sound. We have sounds in it. Uh, e, while if you take the letter B, we use our lips also B. That part is also so sound plus that part needs to be constant. Okay. So, you did not ask these questions at all? You might have asked. You do not remember, right? Okay. All right. Do you think, you, which language do you speak other than English? Do you think we have vowels in Malayalam also? Yes. Yes? What are the vowels of Malayalam? Not A, E, I, O, U. So, A uh, is not a vowel in? It is actually a vowel in Malayalam. A, uh, the sound is A. Uh. 
Okay. Do you, do you see the things that we are talking about? Do you, do you follow why we are talking about these things? Vowel sounds are not specific to English or Malayalam, right? I will ask you one more question before I start with what I have to show. Many of you were told these are the A, E, I, O and U, these are the vowels, right? I think you were also told that we have only 5 vowels in English, am I, am I right? Now, I have a word for you. Okay. All of us have learnt this word and I will just give one example for today. When we say this word and hear me out carefully, when we say this word, what is the first vowel that you hear loudly? Where is that in this? What is the vowel this one is? And what is the first vowel of in, first vowel of this word? So, are they the same thing? No. These are the vowels of English and this is a word of English, right? I am not telling you anything new. You learned this thing and then you learned this word also. You were told very conveniently these are the vowels of English. And then the, you were told a word and in that word there is a different vowel which is not part of these five. Did this raise any question in your mind? Did you ask this question? What is the next vowel of this word? When we say this word, what is the next vowel? A. Uh, what do we write? So, we are saying the next vowel is a. So, the first one is a. I am putting two of them to show length and then we are saying the next one is let us say a. Okay? So, there are two vowels in this word, one is a, the other is a and we write it, write them differently, right? We write something else, we call it something else. Do you, do you see the inconsistency? Now, I am pointing out these things not to show you flaws of English. I am asking, I am showing you these things to sensitize to the things that you may or may not have paid attention to. All right? Now, can we say the vowel a is not part of English? Can we say that? If we are told, we memorized, we got good grades right from LKG, right? And we are doing great. So, can I say a is not a vowel of English? we cannot say that. Then either one of the two possibilities is wrong. Either this is not right, right? In that case, we can say the fact that we are told there are five vowels in English is wrong. Or we can say a ah, as a vowel is not part of English sound inventory. Do you see my point? One of the two is wrong. Which one do you think has problems? First, First one. There are only five letters to represent all the vowels, but, uh, but the spoken language has more vowels. The basic spoken language has more vowels, right? So, we are saying 
the moment we are told that there are five vowel sounds in five vowels in English language, we need to specify that we are talking about five symbols of Roman alphabet which are 26 in number. Out. When we pay attention to English as a spoken language or when we learn English as spoken language, English as part of a spoken repertoire, then we find a different inventory of vowels in the language. Get it? So, in the language, for the sake of learning to speak, there are not only five vowels in English. Get this? Uh, so, A uh, is also part of it. How, how, are they, how are these things taught to us? Do you remember your LKG or, or class 1, class 2, English classes? How, how are these alphabets taught to us? Anybody remembers? Right. So, how, how, is, how does that work? A for apple, B for boy. Now, I want you to pay attention to the word apple. Okay. What is the first sound of the word apple? A. Where is A in that? Do you see this thing? The goal of teaching is spoken English. Right? And we want to teach them A for apple. There is no A in the word apple. Do you see the problem? The second, I, I, I won't go all the way throughout the list because that's completely flawed. At this stage now, you can see this at least. You you started learning English from uh, LKG. I didn't learn English in LKG. So, so, in a way what you are saying, you do not even remember your age at that time when you started learning English. I remember, I started learning it when I was 16. I did not I, I didn't have any idea about the, the language, probably I could not even write my name in, name with English letters. Okay? And I remember that very, very well. Anything that I am telling you is not because of that. Okay? I learned it and I learned these things as well, where you tell me if what I am saying is not making sense. Do you hear the word A in the word, the, the sound A in the word apple? And we teach A for apple. So what kind of a teaching is this? What do we want to say? If we were trying to teach the word apple, begins, the writing of the word apple begins with the alphabet sound, sorry, alphabet symbol A, then it is making sense, right. But we are saying A for apple in spoken language. This is why I gave you the example of the word father, five vowel sounds and the first sound is not part of this five inventory. The this whole inventory of five sounds, not part of that. So, the moment we start paying attention to a spoken language, things are different. Just look at one more example. The next one is B for boy. I think across the country or maybe across the globe, this is how it is taught. Right? And then some, some schools may be using more fancy things like rhymes and other, other stuff. You tell me, is this sound is this thing B even a sound? So, where is B in boy? What is the first sound of boy? Ba. Where is B in that? See this thing? Where is B in that? And if you can add just one more, it can only become funnier. What is the next one? C for cat. 
What is the first sound of cat? What is C in that? The first sound of the word cat is the sound? Ka. I hope you can see that we are not making up these things. We, we, we do not need to really go to a sophisticated laboratory to see these things. There is no, no A sound in the word apple, B does not even become a sound and C for cat is completely outrageous because the first sound of the word cat, cat is ka, which has nothing to do with C. See this thing? Now, the goal of this thing is not to show you these, these, these issues and by no means I am trying to say what you have learnt is wrong. I am sorry, what you have learnt is bad. What I am trying to say is there is a huge mismatch and if at all I am underlying any deficiency which is we are really playing with children's mind when we are teaching in classroom. A for apple, B for boy and C for cat. It was done to you in such a way, here by you I mean only you because this was not done to me. Okay? It was done to you and every other children in such a way that you cannot forget this thing. You even remember now, I am not sure, no, I am sure that not all of you went to same school. You went to different schools in different parts of the country and you still remember these three things, A for apple, B for boy and C for cat. In other words, it was done in such a pathetic and criminal way that you cannot forget it. This is what is done to children in schools. Okay, I am saying these things on record as you can see. Okay? Now, let us only underline through this, this, this description of what we, have, what we have done is these things should be helpful for us in understanding sound system, okay? which is to say sounds of a spoken language is completely different. No, no, not different. Writing system may not have to correspond with sounds of the language. No matter how much you teach A for apple, B for boy or C for cat, every child has already figured out that there is no sound called B, no sound called B. We need to say B. There is no sound called C. We need to say Ka. So, what are the three sounds of the word cat? Ka, A, and Ta. See this thing? First consonant sound of the word boy, Ba. You keep teaching B, C, and all that. Children learning these things have figured out that actual sounds are ba, ka and a. They may not have anything to do with a, b and c in the spoken language. Get this thing? This is, this is what I want to underline to you. Then again, nothing against these things. These are symbols of written script, therefore they do not represent total number of vowel sounds in English. Total number of vowel sounds in English is not just 5. Okay? There are more than that. Can I leave this to you as an assignment to find out total number of vowel sounds in English? Right? Now, so when we move on, now I connect with the things that we have been talking about. Sounds are building blocks of language. We have seen there could be many, many words in a language, infinite number of sentences in a language, but a limited and finite set of sounds in every language. that finite set of sound 
is very small in number. Okay? When we look at inventory of sounds across languages, we find very few sounds differ in two languages. There are very few sounds that are different in two languages. In other words, what we are saying is wo words, sorry, languages share sounds. Get this thing? Languages share sounds. The more number of sounds that are shared in shared between two languages, the closer the two languages are in terms of comprehension and production. The fewer the numbers of common sounds in two languages, the more and more differences in two languages. These are, these are some of the common generic features of, of sounds. Then we started talking about consonants and vowels. And, and you are saying that probably we do not remember what we were told and if at all you found something you remember, this is what you remember, right? Let me, let me tell you about uh, sounds, uh, that is that is also consonants and vowels. Before we look at that distinction between consonants and vowels, I want to show you a particular picture. Do you see this thing? What does this look like? This looks like human face. That that's some kind of some kind of a drawing of of this this part. Remember this? See this? There's some kind of drawing of this part. Right? There are two things, two things here where I want your particular attention. Uh, all, all the names that you, are, that you see listed, they are going to be important, but there are two things right now that I want you to see. There is one, this part, you see this? This is called, is, you see this thing? This is, these are lips, teeth, tongue and this thing. This part is called oral cavity. Okay? And this part is called, you see here, nasal cavity and this thing is called oral cavity. Just these two parts I want you to see first. Sounds that are produced in the oral cavity are called oral sounds and sounds that have something to do with nasal cavity are called nasal sounds. So, all the sounds that you know irrespective of vowels and consonants, they are going to be of two types, either oral sounds or nasal sounds and only this much of apparatus is responsible for sound production, sounds of language. Okay? Little bit more about this. Little, little bit more about this in the in the sense that uh, when how what what is responsible for production of sounds? These are the places in which these are the different types of cavities, oral cavity and nasal cavity where sounds are produced. What is responsible for sound production? In in, in fact, all of them. I am talking about something else, which is uh, okay. If we have to, let me ask you a different question. If we have to say a sound, right? Let's say k and a, right? So k is a consonant or a vowel? Consonant, right? And a is a vowel. Even, even though it is not very clear at this stage how to define a consonant and vowel, we know these two things, right? 
ka is a consonant and a is a vowel. If you have to say these two sounds, which one do you think you can say for longer duration? A? For how long do you think you can say this thing? Forever? Long time, but for how long? Till our breath. Till we can hold breath. See, we need to be specific, therefore I interrupted. Right? Not for ever. But ever is such a long time. Right? We can't say anything forever. However, we can keep saying the sound a uh, for longer duration as long as we can hold breath. Now, why can we not say ka for a long time? There is what? Very nice. Why didn't you say this thing when I was asking you about the difference between consonant and a vowel? They didn't teach you this thing. Then how did you learn that? <laughs> Very nice. He found that, right? All right. So, see, 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 lot of times it happens that you find out things on your own, right? And it is a, it's a generic thing, no, not generic belief specific belief in at least language learning. You have seen how children acquired language just yesterday and I have, I have tried to show you so many things about, about that. And then it is not too much to say that children learn much more than they can be taught. In fact, there is no way one can teach everything that children know. See this thing? There is absolutely no way one can teach. And you do not even know what kinds of things children learn. They also learn not to tell others what they may have learnt. See this thing? If these things possibly could not be taught. Probably these things apply to everybody. In a, in a limited sense, but it applies to everybody. Lot of things you figure out on your own. You just saw this thing, what you were taught. You saw A for apple, B for boy and C for cat. And now, what you have figured out is very, very, very nice. I am really impressed that for, for a consonant sound, there is some kind of obstruction, right? And we will talk about those obstructions in, in order to be specific. And for vowel sounds, there are, it is not fair to say there is no obstruction, it is little obstruction. Because if we say no obstruction, then we will keep speaking all the time. Nobody will shut up. I mean, there are some people who do not stop, but everybody will keep speaking. You just cannot stop if there is no obstruction at all. Right? But let me let me go through this thing phase wise. So, what is the what what is what is the thing that is responsible for speaking? What is the thing that is responsible for speaking? No. These are, the, these are the organs. You just said something. I asked you this question for a specific reason. My question was, for how long do you think you can keep saying a? Uh? As long as we can hold breath. So, what is responsible for sound production is breath. breath. It will be easy for you to understand as you are engineers, human, human body is the best, is an, is an example of perfect engineering. Nothing happens in human body which has got no meaning, which has no, no purpose. Okay? See, we inhale air for and that is called breathing. What, what happens in breathing? We inhale and then exhale. Okay. Inhaling is like input from the immediate society. Right? We inhale. What happens? That air goes all the way to where? 
lungs, right? This and this is not biology 101, this is something general knowledge that all of us know. It goes straight to lungs. It is separated in different parts, at least what lungs retains what body requires, which is which is oxygen. Lungs retains oxygen that it has separated from in inhaling air, which is, which is required for body production of blood and blood circulation and all other kinds of things. We do not need to go into the details of that. What it also does is it ex exhales rest of it. That could be carbon dioxide or anything else. It, it only retains oxygen and exhales everything else. This is what is called breathing process. What is responsible for speech sounds is exhaling air, not inhaling air, exhaling air. The moment it starts from lungs, it comes to these areas, the, the places that you were talking about, vocal cords, larynx, velum and every, any, anything else that you see, oral cavity and nasal cavity the exhaling air is moving through this, these passages and with more obstruction of that exhaling air, we get consonant sounds with little bit obstruction of those ex, the, that amount of exhaling air, we get vowel sounds. This is so far is common for all the languages of the world, okay? Because there are only few, the, there is a limitation of this apparatus. This apparatus is limited in its physical form, therefore only limited sounds. See this thing? Why limited sounds? Because the, there is a physical limitation on our uh, apparatus where the total number of places of articulation for different sounds is limited in number. However, for combining sounds together, and combining words together, what is responsible for them, for those processes, the responsible mechanism for those processes is generative capacity. And generative capacity has something inbuilt which can result into infinite things, therefore infinite sentences and words, however limited number of sounds. Get this thing? I uh, will I'll give you this picture, we will upload this on, online as well, so that you can, you can see these things. One more thing, uh, you see this, there is, there is one more part which is important, where you can see, before I give you examples of actual sounds, you see this part? What is this called? This part is called uvula. You see this, this, this area? Now, this is one, one thing, I mean it is hard to see glottis and larynx and other things. You can see them in picture, but then it is hard to see in actual sense. However, you will, you can, if you try, you can see that. You just have to open your mouth wide enough. Do not don't do it in public, it is not a, a good thing. You can do it on your own, when, whenever you feel comfortable. It is not a very nice looking thing, but you can still see that. It has got a very specific purpose. What it does is, when we are speaking things, when sound production is in process, if it is lowered, then the passage to nasal cavity is open. Should not be very difficult mechanism for you to understand. And the moment there is a um, there is some amount of flow to nasal cavity, it gets, sounds get nasal quality, therefore nasal sounds. So when we say words like, sounds like ma or uh, na, what happens is the uvula gets lowered, some part of flow of air moves through nasal cavity and therefore we get nasal sounds. There are, there are more nasal sounds that we get, but this is how we get it. When the sounds are not nasals, 
the uvula is raised, which means the passage to nasal cavity is completely blocked. Therefore, no nasal quality on sounds. What, the, what we get is only, only oral sounds. So, when we say ka or ba or pa, do you, do you hear anything nasal about it? We do not realize, but uvula is raised. So, lot of physiological processes that keep going on, motorized motor control things that are going on, we are not aware of them, okay? but these, those things keep happening. That is called conditioning of vocal tract. Okay? Speakers of a particular language have a particular set of sounds. While acquiring that language, what happens simultaneously is our vocal tract gets conditioned for that language, for the sounds of that language. Therefore, when we speak English or we learn English later, we, we say, we speak English differently from those who started English, we started learning English way too early. In other words, if we consider some people as native speakers of English, our English is different from them because of that reason. Under no circumstances, we are going to be speaking like them. You see my point? Therefore, if we do not speak the way Britishers might be speaking or Americans might be speaking, that is not our flaw. That is related to conditioning of vocal tract. The places where we grew up is responsible for input. And that input is responsible for conditioning of vocal tract. And then when we learn something else later on, that conditioning stays. And if we want to learn some new sounds from some new languages, then those sounds get influenced by how our vocal tract is already conditioned. It, it works the same way for native speakers of English, if they try to learn Hindi or Malayalam or Punjabi or any other language. Same thing happens to us. Therefore, please keep this thing in mind that we cannot be speaking that way and it is not our flaw. Right? If someone tells you why do you not speak English the way Americans speak, it is one of the most unethical question to ask. It is like saying why do not you look like Americans? Do you, do you see, the, see the point? It is just not possible. What is responsible for that is how and when the conditioning of vocal tract really took place. There are some people who are born and brought up in America who look like us, but their conditioning of vocal tract is perfectly like the conditioning of vocal tract of a native speaker. They speak English differently. They speak English very differently from us and, and their conditioning is responsible for this. Get this thing? So, these are a couple of uh, side notes. I will keep coming to this picture once again. Uh, right now, I want to take you to these terms. So, two broad types, oral and nasal, clear? <coughs> Places of articulation and manners of articulations are the two things that we will be talking about. Places of articulation refer to different places in the in this vocal apparatus which are responsible for sound production. And how that is there are more things responsible for that which is referred as manners of articulation. So, these are going to be two important things which we will be looking at in a clear way and that on the basis of these things we will be able to see the clearer distinctions between consonants and vowels. Okay? And to begin with, the actual distinction between the consonant and vowel is unrestrictive flow of air with little bit obstruction results into vowel sounds and more obstruction at particular places 
gives us gives us uh, consonant sounds. Sometimes that obstruction could be total obstruction, sometimes that obstruction could be partial obstruction, but there is substantial obstruction when we are talking about consonant sounds. So, that is that's the fundamental distinction between a consonant and a vowel. All right? There is one more thing which is important for you to know, which is all the consonant sounds of all the languages that you know or you may not know have one particular vowel already inbuilt in them. Okay? One particular vowel is already inbuilt in them. Right? And you can figure out these things very quickly. When we say a sound like ka, do you hear any vowel here? When we say ma, pa, or any other vowel, any other consonant that you know or you may not know will have this sound inbuilt in it. Okay? That is also the reason why we are unable to say a consonant for a long time. Because if you try speaking a consonant for a longer duration, what you end up doing is you end up speaking uh, the vowel sound. In fact, it is so important that we cannot even say a consonant sound without that. Can you try saying ka without that a? Uh? Nice try, <laughs> right? <laughs> nice effort. But you realize the, realize what I am saying? It's it's impossible to say. Sorry. Sankal. Sure. Right. That that's true. So I am not saying it's not possible at all. That's going to be possible in a word. But can we say that half la? You get the get my point. What I am saying is, if you are saying just isolated sound. There is no no way we can say that. However, that that's a great example. It's not it's not just uh, Hindi. In all languages of the world, we can say sounds without that vowel only when they are in words. For example, when we say a word of English like school, school, the first two sounds what are they? sa and ka right and i i think i have given you this example earlier also that if we want to reduce the cluster we would end up saying as sakul so the fact that we are not saying sakul and we are saying school something is happening to that what is, what's happening here in the word school sakul i'm sorry school So, we have two sounds here, sa and ka, right? Both of them are vowel, I am sorry, both of them are consonants. We know that consonants have inbuilt vowel sounds in them. That inbuilt sound is actually a, this, this is how we represent them, it is called a schwa, a. So, when they form a cluster of two consonants together, okay, this one is dropped. So, dropping this vowel out of, a, out of an isolated sound is not possible. However, dropping of this vowel quality that is inbuilt vowel quality out of a sound is possible when they form a cluster with another sound. See this thing? So, we can say school, where sa is being spoken, being pronounced without that a. The moment we add that a, that becomes sakul, right? The moment we add those, that, that vowel, it becomes sakul. You see, see what, what Punjabis are doing? 
they are, they are not doing anything wrong. It is simply the fact that their language does not allow cluster. That is, to be more specific, we can say their language does not allow dropping of that inbuilt vowel from a, con from a consonant sound. And this cluster of two consonants or three consonants are not only possible in the beginning of a word, it is also going to be possible in the middle of a word. Okay? So therefore, we get words like sankalp. Okay? In a language like Hindi, what is not possible is a cluster at the end of a word. Okay? At the end of a word, where the last consonant is going to be half. That word is not possible in a language like Hindi. However, they used to be possible earlier in something like Sanskrit. So, you may have things written at least in some places words like swagatam. Have you seen this word written? And then in some of the letters you see some, some slant line given. That is an indication of half sound. That is, that half sound simply means lack, lack of that vowel. So, probably in old time, it was possible to say a half sound at the end of the word in a language like Sanskrit, but now that that, that word is part of Hindi, swagatam, we do not say that as a half. We may write in any which way we want, but we do not say it that way. We still say, how do we say that word uh, for welcome? Do you hear that sound a? It's a? It's a complete word, complete sound. So, how we write is not important. We just start, we started with that. I just told you A for apple and B for boy does not mean much. So, how we write is a, is a completely different convention, okay? is a completely different system of learning. However, spoken language is different when we look at these fundamental aspects. Get this? Any questions so far? No? Are, are these things making sense? Clear? I have uh, two more minutes to show you something. Some examples of vowel sounds. These are not all, they are some examples of vowel sounds. They are a, a, e, e, u, and u. So, one is a is a short vowel, and its counterpart a is a longer than that. When we say long vowel, we mean relatively longer than a. When we say e, the distinction between e and e is Again, relative distinction, one is shorter, the other is longer. And, the, and finally, the, the vowel sound u has similar distinction between short and long. What is another interesting point with these vowels is a, what, what would be the place of articulation for a in the oral cavity? That is to say, if we, if we divide it in, let us say, three parts vertically, right? If we divide this in three parts vertically and we say front part, mid part and back part. So, a will be, therefore, that is called a back vowel. Okay? E, e relative to u mid vowel? No, no, not just because it is written here. I want you to realize that. And when we say u, it is that is front vowel. See this thing? Now, this distinction that you see, first, first there are two things I, I say before I stop for today. This distinction that you see front, back and mid, these are called on vertical axis places of articulations. 
and if one is short, the other is long, that is about manner of articulation, that is how these things are set, okay? number one. Number two, this distinction is not a new thing that I am giving you. Do you know when this distinction was first brought to attention? Any idea? So, naturally you do not know who did that. Have you heard the name of Panini? Anybody? Oh, he said that Panini. So, when, when did he live? Sorry? Say something. When did he live? It, he, he, uh, according to st some estimates, he lived around 500 BC. Okay, which is how many years from now? 2500 years, that is the, the, the point is it is not 10 years ago, it was not published in science or somewhere else. Do you know, do, do you guys know the year of invention for printing press? It was, it was around French revolution, right? These things were done way before any machine, sophisticated machines like the ones that we see were developed or even printing press or papers were in place. This was just somebody's observation which is absolutely accurate with all kinds of mechanical apparatus even today. There is no dispute that O is a front vowel. Ah, it, of course, mid, back, front, these are English terminology. Panini had different terms for them. Okay? He, he did not talk about mid, back and front. He talked about same thing in different, different language, language of his time. But these distinctions were done long, long time ago. There is nothing new about them. And the second thing is, these vowels are called cardinal vowels and they are not the vowels of Hindi or Tamil, these vowels are available in all the languages of the world. This distinction of a and a, e and e and u and u is done in all the languages of the world. Probably some of the languages are dead from Paninian time. Some of the languages did not even exist. For example, modern spoken Hindi and modern spoken English was definitely not there at that time. So, what he was talking about was true for languages of that time, true for languages that may have died, true for languages that did not even exist. See the, see the power of that argument, see the power of that uh, classification that someone came up with 2500 years ago. There are a couple of other things about consonants that that he has given, he has talked about. And the picture that I was trying to show you, the story that I told you about exhaling air res being responsible for production of a speech sounds, the distinction between oral cavity and nasal cavity, how oral sounds are produced and nasal sounds are produced, all of them were discussed by Panini. There is not, nothing new in those things. It is just that these stories have been told in different languages at different points points in time. We talk about consonant part next time when we meet. Thank you.